Right, so once you've fabricated the panel, um, what you want to do is get yourself a breadboard. You're going to need this. It's, uh, it basically just allows you to plug in all the wires and then connect those wires to the Arduino. It'll save you a lot of time to get one of these. No soldering or anything like that. Um, so yeah, there's our breadboard. It's got like an adhesive strip on the bottom, which I've stuck down to the panel. And for our actual chip inside, we're going to be using the Arduino Leonardo. And you want the Leonardo because the chip on it is an Atmega 32U4, I believe, and that has support for the keyboard.h library. And basically, if you want it to interact with No Limits 2, you're probably going to need that, um, with some exceptions. And uh, if you want to, if you wonder about those exceptions and how to use No Limits 2 telemetry, just drop me a comment below and I'll explain. Um, but for the most part, you want this because this will allow you to interact with Ride Sims and No Limits 2. Um, by just sending keyboard presses through the USB cable there to your computer. It'll also power the whole thing, and it's where you write your code on to, and this will just sit somewhere like there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get that installed, and uh, see you in a second. Okay, so uh, we have got our, uh, you know, uh, Leonardo, that's it, installed. I've just put some hot glue underneath it, stuck it to the panel, that's... In there pretty securely, not going to move. That's not going to move either. That's good, so when it gets knocked about, it's all going to be okay. So uh, now I'm just going to show you how to hook up wires to the terminal box. But first I'm going to show you what wires I'm going to use. These are probably what you're going to need. These are DuPont jumper cables. Uh, these are ideal because you can plug them into breadboards really easily. So just like this, so you just find a hole you want to put it in. And... Um, there you go, so that's in the breadboard now, that's not going to move anywhere. Uh, you can also plug it into the Arduino very easily, like so. And uh, you can also put them in the terminal blocks quite easily as well. So you're going to want these. Um, you can just use regular wires with an appropriate gauge, but um, honestly I just find these quite easier and they get the job done just as well, if not better. So um, what you want to do is just get your terminal blocks. And depending on the uh, terminal you want to use, you just unscrew that and you have two metal plates. And then you screw them back up. And then the metal plates, they sort of create like um, like a grip between the wires so it's not going to tug out or anything. And it creates a solid connection. So I'm just going to test all the continuity of the buttons and make sure they're all running okay. And uh, then I'm going to hopefully be done with the wiring. So see you then. Okay, so I've hooked up the wires to the contact block. Um, on the bottom one there, the bottom two, you've got one which goes in, one which goes out. And what you'll do is you'll run this from one, its own pin from the Arduino, and then the ground will just go into... I've just got it plugged into the ground on the Arduino, but in reality it'll run through one of these here, so you can just connect everything all up to the ground, because you only have two or three ground pins on the Arduino, and everything which you give power on the panel, so... I have three illuminated buttons, no, four illuminated buttons, that's four grounds there, and those four as well, just for the buttons itself, so that's another four, that's eight, then the two switches, that's ten, the key stop, and the E stop, so that's twelve, um, and there's only three grounds on the Arduino, so that's why you need this breadboard here, so you can just connect it up to there, and then connect one big bus along there up to the Arduino, but yeah, just giving it a lamp test just to test the continuity, and you should be able to see that it works. So I've connected up to the ground there. I'm just gonna grab this pin. And this will be our dispatch. So, you know. Oh, oh, that's why, I've got the wrong cable. There we go, so this is just for the light. And that's nice and bright. So that'll be for the dispatch. These buttons are rated at five volts, no, um, six volts, sorry. But the Arduino can only supply a maximum of five um, and then you also get other chips which only do 3.3. This does both, but if you get 6 volts and rate it on 3.3, it'll look, well, that bright, and that's pretty... I mean, it, it's, it's doable and it does work, but it's just not flashy enough, and it won't shine too well. But if it's on 5 volts like that, the buttons are rated at 6, but 5 is absolutely more than enough. So be careful. When you want to order an Arduino for one of these, you want 6 volts. Um, no, 5 volts, sorry. You want the 5 volt Arduino chips. You don't want the 3.3 because you will not find any buttons rated for 3 volts. But you will find some rated for 6. So that's what you want. So anyways, I'm just going to finish wiring uh, the rest of the terminal blocks up. And I'll, 
I'll, uh, well, I'll fast forward. I'll cut this bit out because it's going to be long and tedious and it's just the same thing over and over again. So, uh, yep, see you on the other side. Okay, so I've uh, put all the wires in all the terminals. I think there's about 12 in total. Um, took a bit of time, but it's all right. So they're all in there, nice and snug, not going to go anywhere. It's exactly what you want. So uh, I'm going to show you how you plug them into the prep. Okay, I may use a diagram for this, but basically, per button, for every bit of electricity that goes in, you need to mount it to the ground. Um, in layman's terms, that's probably the best way I can explain it. So essentially, this is the button here, right? The Arduino, one of these will go to a specific pin on the Arduino, let's say like pin 4 or whatever. And that will read a button press, and if there's electricity flowing through, this will go into the ground, which you need for a complete circuit. And then it will register as a click. Um, and you need it for the lights as well. One coming from the power source, one coming from, well, one going into the ground. And you need that for every single pin. So for all the ground ones, we're going to plug it into this main bus along here. So this has one long strip along here, so we can plug all the ground and cables into there and then into a ground pin. But what I'd recommend doing is, because there's a few ground pins, I'd recommend dividing all ground pins needed equally and then um, putting them into the Arduino like that. So say if you've got, you know, 12, then you put four in one ground, four in another, and four in the third. And uh, that's probably how I'd do it. So, uh, yep, I'm gonna do that, and I'll uh, see you back here. Okay, so you can see that. I've wired up all the terminals, all onto a main ground bus there, and then one which connects to the ground pin on the Arduino, and then all the buttons have their own little pins right at the back there. And uh, so yeah, let's crack on with the programming.